My family and food is my passion and shopping for the very best fresh ingredients is what makes all the difference. Join me as we go on a journey of heartwarming food filled with mouth-watering dishes bound to get those taste buds tingling. Welcome to my kitchen. Fish is great for a weekday meal because it's light and healthy and doesn't take long to cook. Today we'll be making a spinach and cheese pie, some salmon fish cakes, grilled calamari and a blanched asparagus and sugar snap pea salad. I'm going to start off with the spinach and cheese pie. So we have some leeks, some ricotta, cheddar cheese, feta and halloumi gives you a really nice mix of flavors. We're using baby spinach and some phyllo pastry and we're brushing the phyllo with some butter. I'm going to start with the leeks. They need to slowly be cooked on light flame in a little bit of grapeseed oil just to soften them. Now leeks are quite dirty inside so the best way to actually clean them is to cut them down the middle, put them in a bowl of water or under running tap and just check that there's no sand inside, in between the leaves. You don't need the top part of the green. You actually only need the bottom part. And we'll just rinse them off. And if you don't have leeks, even white normal onions will work just as well. We'll just slice them face down. I just want them to soften. While they're softening, we're going to grate some cheese. So halloumi is a nice salty cheese that gives you a nice mix of flavours in this pie. We want to grate it along with the feta and the cheddar. So I want all the cheeses to be a similar size. And then ricotta is very similar to a chunky cottage cheese but a little bit more dry and that actually will just finish off the dish with this I can just crumble into the mixture. And it just mixes quite easily, as you can see. And I'll add some cheddar. Now the mixture must be ready before we actually put it into the phyllo. Otherwise, I'm going to have the phyllo getting too dry while it's waiting for the mixture. So we'll keep the cheeses on the side. I've got a mixture of baby spinach and regular spinach to show you. I love using baby spinach. It's simple, it's easy, you can literally just pop it in a pan and wilt it. But if you're using normal spinach, you would always fold it over like this, take off the spine, and then chop it or shred it to put it before you put it in the pan. With baby spinach, one doesn't need to do that. It will wilt quite quickly. My leeks have softened. We're going to pop the spinach in the pan. It should only take a few minutes to wilt. And we want to season it with some salt and pepper to give it a little bit of flavor before it goes into my pie. So I want the leeks to also give it some flavor. You can see how quickly this cooks. By wilting the spinach this way, we're actually not allowing too much water to come out of it. So all I want to do is just wilt it slightly so that it softens it to go into my pie. We won't have a lot of water. If I wilt it in a pan of boiling water or if I put it into the microwave, I'm going to have a lot of water coming out of the spinach, which is exactly what I don't want. It's going to make my phyllo very soggy. Phyllo pastry should be used at room temperature. It should not be used straight out of the fridge. I take mine out quite early in the morning and leave it out. It's simply flour and water. It really doesn't need to be in the fridge at all. We need about five sheets for this particular recipe. So what I suggest is count them out, take off what you need and put the rest away because it's going to dry out and then it's very difficult to use afterwards. The part that you're not using needs to be rolled up 
and sealed very, very well because you can re-refrigerate it or even refreeze it. Now phyllo, when you defrost it, should always be defrosted in the fridge, never out of the fridge because you land up getting wet spots on it. So working with it, you should work quite fast. So butter is actually the best way to brush it. I like to use an unsalted butter. It doesn't leave little spots on the phyllo. And what we want to do is brush each sheet of phyllo with butter. That way we're going to get a beautiful crisp pastry. Now it doesn't matter that one piece is actually broken. What I'm going to do is just put them together and that's the beauty of it. It really doesn't matter what it looks like. A wide brush works beautifully and if you don't have one of these pastry brushes, a really nice idea is to go to the hardware store, buy a nice white paintbrush, it does exactly the same thing. So what we want to do is take my springform tin. I have a 24 centimetre springform tin, so I need to spray it with some non-stick cooking spray to ensure that nothing sticks. We want to put one layer in at a time so that I can have all different angles sticking out of the phyllo. And now we'll change direction and go this way so that we've got pieces hanging in all different ways. And don't worry too much about putting it neatly inside. So I want to put a layer of cheese on the bottom and then finish with the spinach on top. It doesn't matter that the cheese is on mixed properly, but they're going to give me a really beautiful base and fill up the bottom of that tart. And they're quite salty, so they don't need any more salt or pepper. We'll sprinkle them with a little bit of parsley. So the spinach just forms a layer on top. Spread it over. And now the best part is we fold in all these pieces of phyllo. And we want them to look kind of scrunched when they go in. So you take each layer individually and literally just pull it up and pull it in. So that's it, it looks kind of like a rose, very pretty. We're going to just dot it with a little bit of butter on the outside, even though we've used quite a lot. But that gives you a gorgeous brown when it bakes. And this needs to bake for about 30 minutes on 180 degrees in the middle of the oven. You don't want the oven to be too hot because the top is going to brown before the middle actually cooks and your cheeses melt. So if you see that happening, what I always do is take a little piece of foil, cover the top loosely so it's not completely sealed, and that will stop the top from browning but continue letting the inside finish. And that should take about 30 minutes in total. Next up, we're going to be making some Falklands calamari. We're using Falklands calamari, which are tubes and tentacles, a little bit of butter, some chopped parsley, paprika, and a bit of lemon. It's really not a lot of ingredients. I like to cook them fast, and that's the secret. We're going to heat the pan because I'd like to brown some butter first. The browning of the butter gives it a nuttiness and that's what gives the calamari a really nice taste. You don't need a lot of butter, probably a tablespoon or two, because when you have too much butter, they kind of swim in the pan and the tubes are small. They don't need to be cut. So just check them that they're quite clean. Generally, they're not very difficult to clean. The tentacles are very easy to use. So I'll leave some of them whole. They look quite good. I need the calamari to be quite dry so that they don't splatter when they hit the butter in the pan. A little bit of grapeseed oil just to coat them. And I like to put seasoning on at this stage. So a bit of paprika, some black pepper, quite a lot of seasoning because you want lots of flavor in that calamari and we're not going to add any seasoning while it's in the pan and just toss it. Now the secret is to do it in batches. If you don't cook it in batches a little bit at a time, it kind of stews in the pan. I want to seal it and cook it really, really quickly. So my butter has gone brown. It starts to get quite nutty. We put one batch in at a time and then we'll take it out and do the next batch.
Next, start going in. And don't be afraid if the calamari pops. Don't get a fright. So we don't add any more butter to the pan. So it's a really quick fry so that it keeps them nice and tender. Now I'm going to take a little bit more butter, add it into the pan, because I want a light lemon butter sauce for my calamari. I didn't add lemon before because it would change the flavour. Right, lemon goes in. All the flavours are in the pan, I don't want to lose them. Quick swirl. Calamari back in the pan. A little bit of parsley, just for colour. And it's as simple as that, quick and easy. A little wedge of lemon will just finish it off. When we come back, we'll be making some salmon fish cakes with a pepper juice sauce and asparagus and pea salad. Don't go away. making a light weekday fish meal for the family. We've already made a spinach and cheese pie, some grilled calamari, and now we're going to make some salmon fish cakes with a pepper juice sauce. So the salmon fish cakes are a great way of using fish that's left over in the fridge or adding to some salmon so that they're not too expensive. I'm mixing tinned salmon with fresh salmon. You can also add some lionfish if you'd like. So I have a large tin of pink salmon, I have some leftover fresh salmon, and I've got some kinklip, and I'm going to mix them all together. I've also got a potato, some whole eggs and egg whites, some caster sugar, just to give it a bit of sweetness, and a little bit of flour to bind the whole thing together. What I need to do is flake the fish. So the fish can't be big pieces, otherwise they're not going to stick together. While I'm doing that, I'm going to put some sunflower oil in the pan, just to heat. I never fry in deep oil. I like to use just a little bit, just enough to coat the fish and to let them brown nicely. Okay, so the fish is tinned salmon. We want to be quite economical about the way we feed our family, because food is really expensive. So if you can bulk it and make it still healthy and good and nutritious, that's the way to go. The fresh salmon gives it a beautiful colour. And I'm just flaking it all together so that it mixes really well. With the king clip, what I did was I just put it into a pot of cold water, added a squeeze of lemon juice and some salt, and let it come to a boil. It probably takes about 10 minutes to boil, and then it's cooked. We drained it, let that excess water drain off, and I'm just mixing all the fish together. So I've boiled this potato, and I'm just going to chop it into a small dice. mashed it's little pieces in my mixture let's add it to the fish now we'll add some egg white that makes them nice and fluffy some eggs a little bit of caster sugar and some flour and all of these recipes can be downloaded from the home channel website And you need to mix them long enough until you can feel that the mixture is going to bind. I need a little bit of flour to dip them into, to coat them before we put them in the pan. And if you don't want to use regular flour, gluten-free or spelt flour works perfectly. So what I've got are some little moulds. And the moulds just help to keep them quite even and shape them. And if you don't have one of these, even a muffin tin works beautifully. Just to pop them in the muffin tin so that they're all exactly the same shape. So what I'm going to do is just put it in here, 
press it down, pop them into the flour just to coat them and now they can go into the pan. So they might lose their shape a little bit but they'll all be pretty even. So they need to be fried on a medium heat. The fish is all cooked so it's not a matter of getting the fish inside cooked, it's a matter of it actually just getting colour. And we'll make a few more. Now the secret is not to turn them because what we need is for them to set on the bottom before we actually turn them over otherwise they tend to break. So let them get really nice and brown. We'll turn them only once they've got colour on the bottom. My fish cakes are browning beautifully. They're almost done. I've turned the stove down so that they don't brown too much. And while they finish, let's make our pepper juice sauce. Pepper juice are only from South Africa. They've got a nice little crunch to them. We're going to add some yogurt, a nice Greek yogurt. I've got a low-fat mayonnaise that I'm using just to give it a bit of body. Some Italian parsley. Pinch of salt, a little bit of black pepper. This sauce is the perfect accompaniment for the fish cakes. It's got a bit of a tang and a bit of a kick. I'm going to add some lemon to it. The lemon will also just give it a little hint of flavour. And we'll blend that. It's perfect. Let's check our fish cakes. As you can see, they've got beautiful colour. The secret of our frying is quite high heat because then your food isn't oily and these have got a gorgeous crunch on the outside they're nice and light and fluffy and they are perfectly cooked I've got a lovely platter for my fish cakes Next, we'll be making an asparagus and sugar snap pea salad and the spinach and cheese pie will be ready to come out of the oven. making a light fish meal for every day for the family. We've already made a spinach and cheese pie, some grilled calamari, some salmon fish cakes with a pepper juice sauce and we're going to finish off the meal with an asparagus and sugar pea salad. So what I have is some asparagus, beautiful fresh asparagus, some sugar snap peas and some mange too, some rosa tomatoes which I'm going to cut in half, fresh lemon, a little bit of parsley and I found some beautiful baby fennel which I thought would really add flavour to the salad. Blanching is quite a simple method of boiling the vegetables quickly to keep their colour. You need to add salt to the water because the chlorophyll in the vegetables really keeps nice and green. I'll put the asparagus in, they take about three minutes, not really longer than that. I want to use them in a salad so I don't mind if they have a bit of an extra crunch. And after a minute I'm going to add my peas Replace the lid because you want them to boil quite rapidly and the peas don't take long at all. Now here I have sugar snap peas and here I have mange too. Mange too are flat, you don't actually have the pea inside where the sugar snap pea has a full pea inside. So these will take a little bit longer to cook where the mange too will take exactly a minute. But all together they make a really nice salad. Here's some ice water because they need to go straight into the ice water as soon as they come out of the pot and then we must dry them. While we're waiting I'm going to slice the fennel and I just want to shave it actually because I'm going to use most of the bottom part of the fennel. This is baby fennel and I'm keeping that root on just to hold it together. So this mandolin does a nice job of slicing it very very thinly and fennel is such a selective flavour. It's a licorice flavour, not everybody enjoys it. So you don't want to use too much because it's going to overpower the whole thing. Let's check the asparagus. They're almost coming to a boil, so I'll add the peas. 
They look absolutely perfect. The colors are beautiful. They need to go straight away into the ice water, otherwise they're going to start changing color. And as soon as they're cold, we're going to dry them in a towel because we don't want any wet vegetables in our salad. So while we're waiting, I'm going to cut these little tomatoes in half. We want the color to give us a little bit of change in the salad. And this is really just for decoration. So the garlic, we're going to crush or chop a little bit just to put into the dressing. We smash it. I've added some salt, which makes it easier to chop. And we're just going to chop it. So I may not need so much salt in my dressing. Now we must dry them on a towel because the best way to do this is to use a nice towel that can spread them out. For my platter, we just want to scatter all the vegetables at the bottom. And it's nice to leave them in their shape because they really give it like body. Scatter it with the rows of tomatoes. Sprinkle it with the fennel. I'll add the garlic a bit later. This needs a simple drizzle of olive oil. Because it's a very fresh salad, so it really doesn't need a lot of dressing. Some black pepper. And I want to put some lemon rind on here, because the lemon rind just adds a bit of flavor. We want to use the juice of the lemon as well. So it's lovely and fresh. And just a nice squeeze. And a little bit of grated parmesan, which seriously is an optional extra. But for me, I love parmesan. We haven't put any salt, so a little touch of salt. And I know the garlic is still here. So we're going to sprinkle that on. It looks so fresh and so vibrant. I'd love to just dive in and eat this whole salad. And that's all there is to it. It's quite simple. And just a touch of parsley to finish it off. So my spinach and cheese pie is perfectly baked. I'm going to put it onto my platter. It's still quite hot. It's been in the oven for about 30 minutes. The phyllo is beautiful and crunchy. The cheeses have all melted. So we've got a delicious light meal full of vibrant colors and full of flavor. We have a spinach and cheese pie with a mixture of cheeses, some salmon fish cakes with a nice pepper juice sauce. We've made some calamari with a lemon butter sauce and a pea and asparagus salad with a light lemon and olive oil dressing finished with some grated parmesan cheese. This is exactly the kind of meal that I would serve my family during the week. There's something for everyone. It's light, it's fresh and it's delicious. Please join me next week when I'll be making parmesan crisps and avocado salsa, a light cob salad, very colorful and delicious, the pepper steaks with some parsnip fritters, and we're ending off with a decadent white chocolate tiramisu with berries.